Hello, hello, beautiful people. Natalie Cutler-Welsh here from GoToGirl, visibility and impact coach for wellness-based businesses and impact entrepreneurs. Awesome to see you guys today. I'm super pumped to be talking about a topic that is ever relevant and possibly now more than ever. We're going to be talking about raising resilience and reducing stress. Who wants to hear about that? Comment below. I've got an amazing guest. My good friend, Karen Ross, is going to zoom in with us here and share some of her wisdom. She works with clients in this area, and she's going to share some wisdom with us today. If you're watching live or you're watching later, comment below. Any questions, we'll be in touch. We're here to help. Let's bring her in, Karen Ross. Hey, Karen. Hi, Nate. Hey. So good to see you. All right. Well, let's, before we dive in to the topic of the day, let's uh, let's start with you. Your business name is Start With You. So let's start with you. Give us a little bit of backstory. Who are you and how do you help people? Okay. Thank you. So good to be here. So I am a coach, speaker, writer, and Start With You is essentially about whatever's going on in the world, whatever's going on in our lives whatever we might want to change or achieve or create for ourselves, it is all an inside job. Essentially, it starts with you. It starts with how we are thinking and feeling on the inside and therefore interacting with our environment and the people around us. So most of my work is really about helping people take charge of what's going on on the inside so they can more effectively influence what's going on around them, whether that it's burnout, stress, their leadership, uh, lifestyle design, wanting more time, freedom, um, whatever that might be. Yeah. Do you think a lot of people, you know, kind of put on this, not facade, but kind of like everything's fine, but then inside there's a lot of turmoil going on? Yes. And I think a big reason for that is A, they're just trying to get through life and cope. And also they think everybody else is doing fine. So they should look like they're doing fine as well. Um, But it creates a real pressure cooker situation because coping is not thriving. And so many people out there right now are coping and managing themselves, managing their stress instead of transmuting it or um, moving out of that stress cycle and that um, survival mode that we can so easily find ourselves in when life is getting too much. Um, and, uh, yeah, be operating at another level. So if Mm. someone is sitting here and listening and thinking, oh my gosh, that's me. Like I am literally just hanging on. Um, Mm -hmm. I heard someone the other day saying, I'm just hanging on by a thread at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing people saying I'm just really maxed out. I'm at capacity. There's Mm -hmm. this type of languaging. Um, so what are some, what are some things or even just one immediate thing that someone can do if they feel like they are just coping, but they want to move more towards that thriving space? So one thing that I think doesn't happen in people's days that can really uh, help with the pressure cooker feeling and the the holding on by a thread is actually taking space in a moment to breathe and settle the system back down. And I'm not talking about sitting there doing uh, 10 breaths into the belly and out or, you know, I mean, there's a hundred different thousands of um, breathing exercises I mean actually just pausing to be with yourself for a minute and yes you may take a few breaths in through your nose um, but it's taking that moment to actually be with yourself check in uh, what one of my favorite self-care questions is what do I need right now and sometimes it's that we've been on a mission to get a document finished or we're running around after the kids And we've been needing to go to the loo for an hour and we still haven't gone. And we do that little check-in and we're like, actually, I just need to go and pee and then I can get on with the next thing. Or I need a moment before I go into that meeting or um, I need to just reorient what am I doing for the rest of my day because something turned up at 11 o'clock I wasn't expecting and I've done that and now where am I at? It's just those pause moments that just give us a, literally a breath, excuse me, a breather to then reorient it, re- reorient ourselves and go again. And I mean, I can, I could rattle off all sorts of tools for shifting your stress response, and I can certainly direct people to some free resources. But those moments where we just stop and be with ourselves are really so valuable, and we think we haven't got time. 
because we're running around after the kids we're trying to get that document out or whatever's going on but actually we can't really afford to stop uh, to not stop and take those moments because it will catch up with you that is why it's called burnout it is the system stopping you because you haven't stopped yourself Mm. Um, but also we buy back some energy and capacity when we take those pauses. So whether it's a 10-minute pause, a 30-second pause, or a three-minute pause, clients tell me all the time that when they do that and they, they can settle their system back down and get their needs met, they've got more energy and capacity through the day and they're not as empty at the end of the day. Um, and obviously how grunty the tools are that you're using through the day makes it makes that even more so but those pauses that we think we've never got time for are like money in the bank <laughs> They're like putting investing some time into our overall energy because we're giving ourselves the space we need instead of just go 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 until some point in the day we just run out of steam or at the end of the week or you know whenever it catches up with us that is so awesome. Mm. I love the phrase settle the system down. So I wrote that down mm. and these pause moments or, or mm. pausing to be present where they don't have to remember fancy exercises or say some sort of mantra, yeah. it's like just pause and be present. That leads me super nicely into the topic of burnout. Like I know you help a lot of people, including mm. men um, with your coaching, mm. especially around this burnout. And this is something that a lot of people have experienced. So comment below you guys, if you're if you, you know, if you want to up your brave and comment below, if you've experienced burnout yourself, or maybe, you know, you've got a partner who's experienced burnout, mm. it's super common that people do, you know, go, 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 go. And then they just kind of hit that wall, either emotionally, you know, in terms of anxiety, mm-hmm. depression, whatever, mental health and wellness, or body wise, their actual health just crashes or both. So mm. I'm sure you see a lot of that what are some things that people can do in terms of raising resilience and avoiding burnout? Um, What can they do to avoid burnout? I think if I was going to go a little bit more big picture on it first, the thing I would say is stop stop normalizing stress Mm. because stress is the road to burnout. It's just a fancy word for chronic stress that's overtaken your your body and so on Um, and so when we let stress be part of our everyday and we accept that that's just part of life these days which is what so many people unwittingly and unknowingly often realize are doing then we're allowing it to be there and it, it creeps up so that our normal stress levels become a bit higher and a bit higher and because it happens in such a cumulative way it sneaks in you know we 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 don't realize just how wound up our our kind of typical level is um and that cumulative process is effectively what leads to burnout so if we can come back here and go okay actually being stressed in my day Uh, isn't normal it might be my current normal but it's not normal or it's not ideal it's not thriving the next piece that kind of sits with that is lowering your tolerance to being stressed in the first place so this was a game changer for me Um, I remember um, being on the phone to my coaching supervisor this is going back um, maybe 10 years now or more Um, And I, you know, I was working for myself, I was doing work I was really passionate about. Um, I I could set my own hours, but I was still running stress. And I was describing this to her and feeling all woe is me and and really unhappy with how I was feeling about my work life, even though it was supposed to be amazing. And she said this thing that I've never forgotten. It was, uh, she just said, oh, look, I used to feel like that. And I decided I wasn't prepared to feel crappy and stressed anymore it's just I just lost tolerance for it Hmm. and it just landed with me so fully I was like well of course why would we tolerate feeling like that and from that day on I'm not saying I've turned my stress around immediately and just stopped doing stress I it was a journey out of that process and I burnt out before I really learned um uh, and was you know the ultimate stress junkie for quite a while but that tolerance was so key and now I have very little tolerance 
for feeling disrupted in my day with my um, from a stress response. That doesn't mean I don't get stressed because if you have a nervous system, you can get stressed. It's called fight flight system, right? We're hardwired for it. Um, but the key is that we don't go there very often or so easily as we used to. And we know how to get ourselves back out really quickly, which is what I'm meaning when I talk about settling the system down. Mm. And there are so many ways we can do that because there are lots of doorways into the nervous system that settle us quickly. Um, but if we are still tolerating it and we still think it's it's just how it is, then we're not going to make those changes. We're not going to stop it in its tracks at 11 o'clock when that deadline suddenly gets brought forward or something. Two um, things I want to jump so, in on. Number one, I love yeah. that whole, the question, and I'm going to pose it back to the audience, which is what are you currently tolerating in your life at the moment? Mm -hmm. What are you tolerating and that you know is not good for you, right? So, um, and Karen, you, you admitted it yourself being a you know former dress uh, stress junkie. So you guys, what are you tolerating at the moment? And in my languaging, I often ask people, what, what are you ready to lovingly let go of so that you can courageously create what you want in your life, business, wellness, relationships, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I love that question. What are you tolerating? And I love that you kind of ask people that. The other thing is more of a challenge because I like I, I agree that would you say that there's good stress and bad stress? Meaning I think it is it it is like stress is something that we have in our lives, but I agree people are kind of moving the goalposts on stress. Like they're normalizing bad stress more and more. And they and they even say things like, well, you know how it is. Like your things are always, this is just the way it is. Or, you know, they kind of, they put up with it. And, and you're saying, you know, what are you tolerating? Yeah. Bring those goalposts back down. And when people say to me, oh, I'm so busy. I say, good busy or bad busy, right? And I'd say the same thing if they go, oh, I'm so stressed right now. Stress. I'd be like, good stressed or bad stressed? Because I'm like excited stressed because I have so many ideas and projects and people and people I want to connect. And that's, I'm excited stressed. But I feel like a lot of people are like bad stressed. Like they're, they're, oh, I just have no time for myself. And they're kind of in that bitter, resentful, yeah, frustrated, lately. overwhelmed, what are your yeah. thoughts on the good stress, bad yeah. stress question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a really, really good question. And there's a few things in what you just said, because firstly, the stress response is your internal experience of uh, your internal experience, your response to what's going on around you. So those things outside of you, um, whether it's all the things you've got to do this week or what the economy is doing or whatever is causing that stress, those are what I would call stressors. So they're the external piece. Or our thinking can be a stressor. It could be an internal thing. Um, and then there's our response to it. So the fact that we're feeling stress. And when we've got lots of ideas and we want to do this and we want to do that, that might be causing some... I would I would say that's causing more activation, excitement, and exertion than it might be causing stress. If you're trying to do too much at once, it might cause some pressure on the body mm -hmm. or, or the mind, or you know, it's too, it's the too muchness. Mm -hmm. So I get I'm always a bit reluctant to talk about good stress and bad stress because it still it still somehow keeps us tied into this idea that stress is okay. And some people are convinced that a bit of pressure helps them perform better. And for some of us, depending on where we are on the continuum around um, that need for some pressure, that is actually true. But if it's flipped you into your fight flight system, then you're no longer in a performance state. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but it's certainly true that good stressors like buying a new house or getting married or starting a new business or growing the business, all of those things are good things, but they can definitely cause stress in the body. So when we can distinguish the difference between the cool thing that's happening that's causing pressure and busyness and, and lots of things going on and the, our internal response we can take charge of how we're feeling inside we can settle our nervous system down we get more access then to our creativity to our foresight um, our brain literally works better when we're in that karma state and so then we can navigate those big things and all of that stuff uh, more successfully 
So I think that's a really important distinction that we, it might be good stuff, but it could still be causing us unhelpful stress that's going to leave us more exhausted and less effective as we're navigating that period. Um, the other thing that you talked about, about the busyness, oh my God, so the, I, I can so relate to this. And this was another big turning point for me when I was, I heard myself, it was around the time I had, I was rebranding my business and I was definitely going through what we would call a busy period um, by any definition. I had a full client load and I was uh, working massively on this branding project. And I heard myself when people saying, oh, how, how's your week going and so on? And I heard myself say for the 15 millionth time oh I'm just so busy and I just thought oh my god I never want to hear those words come out of my mouth again and made a very conscious decision to not keep playing that game and I and I started to notice especially going through the checkout at the supermarket and they say I'm oh, having a busy day and you know these days I'm like oh not really because I actually very intentionally don't do busy as much as possible <laughs> occasionally it feels it's a very full day Yesterday was a very full day, but it was relatively structured so that it wasn't crazy or anything, but there was a lot in it. Um, but I really, really have no interest in busyness anymore. But it's also, it's quite glamorous. Like people, mm. you know, I think historically we've all kind of felt like, oh, I'm just so busy and important, darling, is sort of tacked on the end of it and <laughs> unspoken. So we kind of feel really good that we've got so much going on. And I feel really great that I don't have so much going on quite often. It's a very sedate kind of, I, and, you know, I choose to, to do that. Some people like lots of full days and that's fine too. So it's about how, how at choice are you or how much does it feel like it's happening to you? That's mm. a pretty fundamental difference. And I love that too, because I always love to bring it back to, what is your intention? So whether it be in your business or your yeah. life, like how do you want to operate? How do you want to show up? Do you want to be busy or do you want to be frantic and overwhelmed? I think nobody wants to be frantic and overwhelmed, but I love that you shifted the languaging. So you went from saying, you know, I'm busy to like, it's, you know, I've got a really full day. So partly it's languaging, but also partly it's realizing that it's not serving you or that's not how you want to operate. And then putting some kind of boundaries in place. And you know, whenever I think of you, I got to say, so I've known you for over a year. Whenever I think of you, I do think of amazing boundaries. Like I'll say, Hey, are you coming to our business connection zoom call? And you'll be like, Oh, I don't work on Wednesdays, you know? And I'll be like, Oh, if it were me, like I would have been like, just trying to still jump on and still be there. But I love that you're so clear on your boundaries. And when you're on holiday, you're on holiday and you don't try to squeeze things in. And I mean, I'm a classic, oh, I'll just squeeze in a person here and I'll just have no buffer time there. And it's something I constantly am working on is, is the boundaries. So can you comment mm -hmm. on that? Like in your, obviously your own journey, but um, is that something you work with people on, like helping them to actually create and also stick to boundaries so that they can avoid this burnout trap? Mm, yes, it's a really good question. And I, I mean, I can't think of a client probably I've worked with that hasn't, we haven't worked with boundary stuff somewhere along the line because we're, we're very much raised in our society, I think, to look after everybody else and to serve others. And that has us, um, often we're, we're not even raised with good boundaries. I wasn't raised with great boundaries. I had to learn that as an adult. And then when I, I went through some burnout and then was in poor health for quite a while. And that is a really quick way to learn where your boundaries need to go because you, your capacity is so low. So I kind of learned the hard way what I could and couldn't do. And then as I've um, come back into sort of healthy, normal mode, I've been way more intentional about um, what I want that to look like. So yes, I have uh, Wednesdays off generally, and I might I may still do some work things on a Wednesday. I may sometimes I do make our calls, but if I'm out and doing other things, then I won't. So it really just so there's still flex in there. It's not like because I'm I uh, again something I've been doing with just I would say three quarters of my clients right now. We're creating ideal week. So what is your ideal week? What would it be structured like? Where are the chunks of time spent? And there's a whole lot of pieces that go around that. Um, but it's like, it's you designing it and choosing how do you want your week to be structured? When do you want to be available for people? 
um, all of those good things. And it's a way for us to do balancing because we all kind of strive for balance, but balancing is a verb. It's it's a it's a doing. It's a process. We don't have perfect balance all of the time. Um, but a ba- balancing comes from knowing what those boundaries are and um, what you want to do with your time and when you want to be available, but also having some flex in there. So it's not about then giving yourself some rules you have to stick to. Um, it's more claiming space for the important yeah. things. Yeah. I love um, that, the creation of the ideal week. So you guys comment below, mm-hmm. what would your ideal week look like? Or what, what's one or two things that your ideal week would include? If you want help to walk, walk mm-hmm. through that, get in touch with Karen. She's amazing at that. Mm-hmm. Um, also, just any ahas that people have had as we go through. Like, do you notice that you're stuck mm-hmm. in this stress cycle that, that Karen talks about? Are you working on your boundaries? Is that something that you've you've kind of mastered? Um, comment below, let us know, give us some some questions and some ah ahas that you guys are experiencing. Uh, Karen, I'm going to ask you in a minute what's coming up for you and how people can work with you further, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, But just before we do that, you know, I'd love to hear like a case study or a story about someone that you've been working with and some progress that they've seen. Sure. Um, Without breaking any confidentiality. um, yeah, of course, of course. Um, I mean, there's lots of examples, but and I've just been speaking to someone this morning who would be who's a classic burnout situation, and she's suddenly gone. Oh my god, I did this ten years ago. I took a year off, but I didn't actually do any of the inner work and change. You know, get to the bottom of how I got there, and here I am again. And now she's ready to do the work. Super, super exciting. Um, and so somebody who was in that boat a few years ago um, uh, rang me one day and he said, look, a colleague of mine gave me your name about six months ago. This morning I was crying in front of my wife and kids. I think this was the day I was meant to ring you. And mm-hmm. he was just in chronic stress burnout. Um, and he is like my poster boy <laughs> for resilience and thriving now. And, oh, I'm getting... To, um, Goosey's talking about that Um, and is now, you know, he's still leading the business he runs in the same way, but he's just doing it in a whole different way. His his outlook is different. His demeanor is different. He just doesn't. He totally bought into this idea of um, dropping any tolerance for stress very quickly um, and then put all of the new strategies in place. We did some inner work, shifted some of those stuck patterns. and yeah, and those that's that's what's possible, and that um, that happens over a number of months. And then he circled back to me a couple of times and built on that because once you're out of the stress response and cycle, and your system is is kind of working in healthy mode again, that's when you're like, okay, right, what do I want to do in the world, um, and how can I get even better? And and we've got some capacity then for growth and up leveling. But when we're in that survival mode and chronic stress we we that is not you can't up level from there um so yeah so he would be a poster boy for <laughs> I love watching your face and about it's it. like very so, delightful to do that it, work yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so cool. and good on him I mean obviously people have to be at a point before yeah, they reach out yeah. and ask for help and for a lot of people tragically it's like they have to get to that breaking point it is before they say enough is enough mm-hmm. I'm ready yeah, it, yeah. Unfortunately, that does we humans, you know, bless our cotton socks. We just somehow need to hit a wall before, you know. I remember another a client reaching out to me, and she just had a stent put in her heart, and she was, um, you know, running a a, a business, and she just said, "I clearly I can't keep doing that how I was doing it. Um, you know, my heart's been fixed, but you know, it had really freaked her out, and mm-hmm. so." Yeah, it's a pity we sometimes have to get to that point to then transform. Mm. And yeah, that's right. Like people have to be ready to do the work and sometimes they're not ready to do the work until their body gets, you know, like that lady. Or yeah, it's, they're just falling it's almost apart. like mm, it's almost like we need the pain to get unignorable. <laughs> there's, a, there's probably a better term for that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, so what I would say on the back of that is if people, if you know that you're stressed all the time, which would be every day or, you know, multiple times through the week, that's enough. That's enough to, to make some changes. And because burnout is something that takes, because it taxes the nervous system so much, 
the nervous system takes a long time to recover. Um, and I really try and get this across to people because you can't recover from that quickly, generally. And I'm and I don't make negative statements generalizing like that with things as a general rule because I believe we live in a quantum universe and you can do anything and it doesn't need to take very long. But the nature of, we live in an organic body that's, um, and when a nervous system burns out, it can take quite some time to recover back to thriving. So I just always encourage people, just don't go there in the first place. It's way quicker. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Well, hey, on that note, what have you got coming up in terms of, um, any workshops or any programs mm. that you've got, and then how mm. can people find you online? Mm, sure. So um, for people wanting to s- start sorting their stress out, if they jump onto my website, which is startwithyou.co, just CO, there is a free Start Me Up toolkit that will give you some insights and tools immediately. And then there are some online, short online masterclasses that do the same. And then the next piece after that, if you're like, okay, yeah, I really just want to start sorting this out, is my seven-week online resilience program. And that's a self-study program that I created based on all the typical things that over the years people um, need to um, get on top of and want to transform, all the strategies, all the tools, all laid out in a really easy-to-follow program of videos and handbooks and tools and so on. So that is a really good go-to for people in this boat of stress, chronic stress, stress cycle, burnout, all of that guff. Um, I Obviously, I work with people one-on-one in coaching programs for the deep dive work and for really making shift. Um, and in the new year, I have a program coming to set your year up so that you're really front-footing how you are going into your year and, and to use your word, being very intentional. So that is coming up. So if you jump into my database, you will definitely hear about all of those things. I have VIP days coming and all, uh, other bits and bobs. But if you yeah jump onto the site and sign up, then that'll make sure you know everything that's coming. You'll be in the loop. I'm glad you yeah. mentioned the one-on-one stuff because there will be people that go, nope, I'll just do the self-study and I'll do it over summer. And I think that's an amazing option for people. Mm. But there'll be other people that go, listen, I'm never going to get around to doing that. Like, I just need the accountability of meeting with you, you know, live online mm. on Zoom and um, to make this to really to really move forward. So that's awesome that you mentioned that. Awesome. So, hey, before we wrap mm. things up, is there anything else you want to add and share with our audience? I would just add this very simple concept that we, we've we got this old expression that gets used a lot, um, you know, just go with the flow. And one of the things I often talk to clients about when they're in stress is that sometimes the flow around you is really shitty. People are stressed, worried, uh, you know, there's lots of angst and worry in the collective right now because of everything that's going on in the world. Um, if you work in an accounting firm, month end year end everybody's freaking out right now the entire country of New Zealand is you know starting to do the whole oh my god it's Christmas we've got to get everything finished by Christmas crazy um so sometimes the flow is crappy so I just say be your flow take care of your internal state uh choose to be calmer than everybody else that will make Mm -hmm. you the most intelligent person in the room as well because your brain is going to be in (laughs) some equilibrium instead of the fight flight system um and yeah just don't be afraid to be your own flow it might feel like you're swimming upstream a little bit because everybody else is kind of going um so don't worry about it be the calm one and own it because that is the way through and the way to be thriving and being your best self I love that I took I took that down I'm like that is a brilliant quote sometimes the flow is crappy choose to be the calmest person yeah so it's are Just, the calmest person in the room. Yeah. Don't go with the flow, be the flow. Nice. Love it. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Karen, for joining us. Comment thank below, you. you guys. And we'll see you next time. I'll just say farewell to Karen and then I'll wrap it up. Thanks so much, Karen, for coming thank on. Thank you. Pleasure.
Awesome, guys. There we go. That wraps up that session all about raising resilience and reducing stress. If you want to check out the rest of the series, I've got the Up Your Brave series. I've got the brand new Wake Up Your Woo. You can check that out on Rumble and also on YouTube. I'll put the links below. And to find out more about visibility, impact, and super connections for your business and upcoming events, upyourbrave.com. See you next time.